I just left one wine show last weekend and I'm on my way to the next one. Must be another road trip here on Flying for Flavor. Since I'm doing two wine events in a matter of a handful of days, I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to make some audio notes just to describe what it's like to go to some of these events if you've never been to one before, uh, how to make a plan, how to get through it with all that wine to sample, and uh, some of the highlights from each of the two events. For those who have gone to some of these events before, especially in Ontario, you're probably familiar with events like the Gourmet Food and Wine Expo, uh, which is actually coming up next weekend. I believe it's November 17th to 19th, somewhere around there. Um, so usually held at the Convention Centre in downtown Toronto. I was introduced to the similar show in Montreal last year. Uh, we had gone on a road trip and to visit the Ottawa Wine Show and on the very same weekend the Montreal uh, and SAQ people have their own um, similar wine event uh, at the Place Bon Adventure in Montreal. So we managed to tackle both last year and I was so impressed with that Montreal uh, mix of wines and what's available there as compared to here in Ontario that I decided to make the road trip there again this year. So that was held last weekend, uh, just finished from November 2nd to 4th. They did a really great job with a couple of things this year. Um, I, if I didn't notice it last year, it may just be introduced this year, but they had a mobile app, which not only uh, gave you the full layout of how the show is set up, where things would be located, but the ongoing schedule of the little tasting events that you can attend at the show on uh, both Friday and Saturday. And they were only charging uh, six coupons, which essentially is $6 uh, per seat to attend these events. Uh, they're more like little tutored tastings as the they would call it at the Gourmet Food and Wine Show. But the Toronto one charges a whole lot more to attend those events. So they had a uh, Pretty much wines from almost every country that you could think of that are great wine producers. They had um, everything from Argentina, Argentina to Armenia. Uh, they even had wines from Greece and Germany, uh, Portugal, uh, Uruguay, and South Africa. And of course, they had a lot of other things like different distilleries, uh, other producers like uh, rum and vermouth from Martinique. Uh, Grand Marnier was there. Yeah, hooray for me. It's one of my favorites. Sotelage was there from Quebec, of course. They also had three feature areas that were set up in the central part of the hall. They usually like to have three different themes. Usually it is um, one producer or not a producer, but one particular wine region that they focus on. And then they produce, they focus on one particular varietal to showcase and then usually a third. So this year it was uh, Washington State wines. So for those who aren't familiar with them, some of my favorites are usually the Pinot Noirs, Chardonnays and Syrahs from Washington State. They also had an entire area uh, focused on Champagne. So yes, that is not the sparkling wines. That is the true Champagne from the Champagne region in France. So all the big names were there, Veuve Clicquot, uh, Moe Chandon, as well as some of their other uh, champagnes that they produce that you may not be familiar with. It was a great time to sample them. And then they had a cocktail section. So the, some of them were just uh, straight distilleries that were also there to showcase a cocktail using what they produce but other ones were just offering a free samples not free samples but um, inexpensive samples of some of their best so the way that these shows are organized it's pretty much in the same format so I'll start with talking about the one uh, from Montreal and it's called La Grande Degustation they showcase uh, they showcase wines that are available both at the SAQ as well as for private import so for private import, that means that there must be a minimum order requirement and orders must be shipped to an SAQ or to Quebec address. And that means that you must be living in Quebec to have a Quebec address so that you can have those private imports shipped. But they all have different minimum requirements. So if you happen to be listening to this uh, from the Quebec area or if you have friends or family there, um, the wines are usually available 
mostly in case lots of 12, but sometimes they go as low as six. So there's a great opportunity to try a lot of these wines that don't necessarily make the listing for the SEQ, but they are some of the better ones from certain producers that they may just have to have large quantities of to be able to hit the minimums that the SAQ requires. So this would be a similar setup for how they would do it at the LCBO as well. So you can order on site for any of these wines before you leave. They have one central ordering station. Uh, basically it's a self-serve place. Uh, you make a list or get notes from each of the uh, producers or wine agents that are on site for the correct order numbers, etc. And uh, basically fill in your order information and they will contact you when it is ready for delivery or for pickup at the SAQ that you chose. So I mentioned the mobile app and the tasting events, but let's just go into general quickly about strategies for the show. So a couple little notes that I always tell people if they've never gone to one of these events before is to start with a plan. It is very overwhelming the number of wines and other beverages that you could be sampling there. And if you aren't careful or you haven't planned ahead, you can either get carried away, uh, which has happened on more than one occasion to more than one person that I know, uh, probably including me. However, you can also make a plan to not be disappointed that you missed out on trying something that you really wanted to. So a couple little notes, they sound obvious, but most of these places are in convention style centers. Their flooring isn't exactly easy on the feet. So I always suggest wearing uh, good comfortable shoes, uh, dress in layers because you're not sure how the temperature is going to be inside. And for ladies, this is not the time to bring your big massive handbag. They don't usually provide at most shows large bags to put in all of those brochures and paraphernalia. So I've basically invested myself in a decent sized crossbody bag with a zipper closure that I wear at the show and this way I can tuck in little business cards that I grab or I have my own business cards for handing out. I can put my little coupons that I use for purchasing samples inside and uh, of course just stashing my phone so I can take photos, videos and notes using their mobile app. A lot of places have water or these shows would have water someplace on site. They won't necessarily have soft drinks or other kinds of alcoholic beverages. You may be able, or non-alcoholic, you may be able to find a coffee station in some of the larger shows, but for the most part, you're there to sample uh, alcoholic wares. So you gotta be prepared for that. Um, usually my strategy for the show kind of runs the same way. I start with light whites and sparklings to start, and then I work toward reds as the evening progresses. And if they're available, if there's going to be cocktails or spirits, I usually like to finish with those at the end of the evening because I am there for the wines first and foremost. And usually after a cocktail or two or a heavy spirit, um, my palate's a little numb and I'm not really tasting the same wines or tasting the wines the same way that I really originally planned to. So I kind of like to focus on the ones that I want to get to first. I also suggest that if you can get there the earlier the better. Anything closer to dinner time usually gets a little crazy and a little busy. The Montreal show specifically, we were there on the Friday afternoon, shortly after it opened at 3. I think we were there around 3.30. Uh, From 3.30 to 5.30, there was very few lineups at any of the booths. We didn't have any trouble uh, going through the crowds, trying to figure out where we wanted to go, what we wanted to taste next. It wasn't until about 6.30, 7 o'clock where things started to get really packed. And if you wanted a sample of any kind of a a wine from a very popular producer, you were probably waiting at least five minutes for it. And uh, when I go to those events, I really don't like to wait. So my plan for this one, I really wanted to focus on Chilean wines because the wine event that I'm heading to tonight actually is the Wines of Chile event at the Royal Ontario Museum. I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. I wanted to be able to compare the wines from Chile that were available uh, at the SAQ and for private import and just to check and see if there's any comparatives with what the uh, Chilean wine producers are promoting here in Ontario. So it'll be interesting to be able to do that comparison. I try to stay away from the usual LCBO listed items that you see all the time because I can sample those either by the glass in local restaurants at other events in Ontario. So for me to try those there seemed a bit of a waste. Um, The champagne section 
if I'm going to splurge on those because these sample prices were quite high. So these aren't champagnes necessarily that it's something that you'd be drinking on an ongoing basis unless you have a lot of money to spare. So if I was going to um, splurge and use some of the sample tickets for samplings of champagne, I wouldn't necessarily do a standard Vivre Clicquot or a Moët Chandon unless they have a different cuvee or vintage that I don't usually get to sample uh, any other time. And for a similar example, they have a Grand Marnier booth that I love, but I was going to, if I'm going to have Grand Marnier, I can have it any time, but this was a 100-year-old Grand Marnier that I decided to sample that night. I adore Spanish wines, and of course there were many at this show as well, but I was really impressed or I focused on regions or producers that I was not familiar with. So I actually met two uh, new producers from two different wine regions that are very small in Spain that I wasn't really familiar with, and I'm actually going to make plans to reach out to one of them to visit in January since it's close to where our rental is going to be in Portugal. So I think that'll be a fun little side trip one day. And Norm never says no to going across the border to Spain. And as I'm saying this, he's nodding beside me while he's driving. Yes, that's where we're going. Okay, so a couple of little favorites to make note of. Uh, for those who are going to be over on the Quebec side at all, you can check out the SAQ. One of my favorites that was their regular listing item is the Mirabeau from Provence in France. It is a very easy drinking, not sweet, uh, but not too dry, very pale rosé. Uh, it's a great, I would call that my afternoon wine. And uh, as soon as I saw it, uh, I was very excited because we don't really get it at, uh, in here in Ontario. And uh, I highly recommend it, grabbing it whenever you can. And then for the LCBO listings, there wasn't a whole lot that were available there, aside from that I sampled anyhow. But I was really impressed to see Domaine Quailis on hand. They are a wine producer in Niagara. I found them, and you'll notice some of my notes from a previous visit when I was in Niagara uh, this past spring. I actually got to uh, go for a full tasting there, and one of the things that they do really well is Burgundian style Chardonnays and Pinot Noirs. They do produce a lot of other ones, but their Chardonnays and Pinots are some of the best that I've had in that area and I've always been singing their praises so I was very happy to see Domaine Quailis there among all of these other really big name uh, international pro uh, producers and they had their uh, Pinot Noir and Pinot Noir Reserve there for sampling and it showed really well even with all of the other big Pinots uh, from all around the world so I was very impressed and gave them kudos and uh, that's one of the ones I allowed myself to have a glass of because it's not available at the LCBO. So if you're down in the Niagara region, make sure you check out Domain Quailis. I'll provide a link in the show notes. Oh, show notes for this because it's a bonus episode, different format. So it will be stephaniepichet.ca backslash wine show 2017. So that's uh, stephaniepichet.ca slash W-I-N-E-S-H-O-W 2017. So that's where the show notes will be for this. Or you can just go to flyingforflavor.ca and follow down to the bonus link at the bottom. So tonight, uh, the event's going to be showcasing the best of Chile. Uh, it's also going to have some private imports probably as well as the standard LCBO and vintages listings. So I will let you know which ones I'm ordering in for myself, which ones I am uh, making note of for future purchases through LCBO. And I will just make some general notes from my uh, little rental suite tomorrow morning uh, before I uh, head out for the rest of my day, just so I can give you an update on how it went and if there's any other notes for how you can tackle your next one event. But until then, cheers. Okay, it's the next morning and I'm here in my little rental suite on the west end of downtown Toronto. Um, I'm in walking distance for many things here. I'm just on Queen Street West. So it's a good stop for me uh, just when I need to get some work done in the morning before the rest of my regular day goes. So last night was so much fun. It wasn't so much a standard wine show as a party. They really set the mood at the Royal Ontario Museum last night. They had uh, dancers in from Chile who were doing this big performance in the main hall on the lower floor of the Royal Ontario Museum to greet guests before they went upstairs. 
And then they had scheduled ones throughout the evening. Uh, they had fantastic musicians. I'm not sure if they were local or even Chilean, but they did a spectacular job. They had uh, little foods here and there. Some of them are little recipes and small plates inspired by a Chilean chef who's very uh, famous. And they, between that and the Royal Ontario Museum and then the staff, it was just warm and cozy, not overly packed. Didn't feel like you were in such a crowd that you were bumping into everybody. Everyone who was there was having a great time. The wines were fantastic. The foods were good with the music and then the dancers even in between their numbers they would walk around the uh, hall with everybody. So you were kind of standing next to the guy with the hat that you just saw dance two minutes ago. And he was interested in wandering around and seeing everyone's reaction to the Chilean wine food. So all in all, it was a lot of fun. Okay, so on to the uh, nuts and bolts, because I'm sure you're not listening to this talking about my evening. You're listening to this because you want to know about the wine. All right, so my plan last night was very similar to most of my wine show process that I talked about earlier. I start with the whites. So in Chile, the two main varietals that you'll find are usually Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay. I found I was gravitating more to the Chardonnays, partly because the Chardonnays from Chile, I find, are more well-rounded, bigger fruit. Uh, They're just, they do a really good job of them. So I kind of leaned towards the Chardonnays when I could. I think I only sampled one sparkling. It was really nice. It was an extra dry but it's not available here at the LCBO or in vintages uh, for private order only. So it was one of those ones. It was a nice palate cleanser before I went on to my reds. Now for the reds, the two main grape varietals that you'll usually see if you're shopping for Chilean wine is, of course, Cabernet Sauvignon, because it's not only an easy grower, the temperatures and the climate from the ocean and the mountains in Chile really do well with Cabernet Sauvignon. So some of theirs are spectacular. And of course, their most famous grape is the Carmenere. So if you've never tried a Carmenere, I would say it's little, can be a little lighter than a Cab, uh, but it sometimes can even have like this smoky undertone to it. It's really unique. So it's just like some of the other Uh, Agents last night at the booths were also explaining to other guests at the event to kind of try a side-by-side. If you like a particular brand from Chile, whether it's uh, Montes or uh, Connoisseur, try the Carmenere with the cab next to it, just so you can get the subtle differences between the two. So the whole history of Carmenere, of course, is it comes from the word Carmen, which is means red. So it has to do with the uh, color and celebration of uh, that color of red that that grape varietal has. And it is native to Chile, so it is one of their little flagships that they love so much. So the other grape varietal in the reds that I've been drawn to over the last little while is Syrah. So Syrah, of course, is the same as Shiraz. Uh, it just depends on where it's grown and who's naming it. But essentially, it's the same grape varietal. So Syrahs are not, you don't usually get to see a lot of Chilean Syrahs here in Canada. I tend to find them more when I'm traveling. So for those who go down to all-inclusive destinations, Mexico, Caribbean, Central America, most of the big well-known resort chains are usually Spanish-owned. And they will bring in Spanish wines or wines from Central America or South America, usually as their house wines. So a lot of times you'll find that they're carrying a lot of these Chilean brands as their house brands, especially in the higher end Spanish owned hotels. So I've been basically getting to sample a lot of the Chilean wines over the last several years, but I've really been finding that I've fallen in love with the Syrahs from there. And I get so disappointed every time I come home, there's none left. And it's not that it's none left. They don't really send them here because it's not something that they're known for here in Canada. They tend to um, export them to different countries instead, uh, keep them for themselves, of course, in their area. But from what, or they use them in blends, and then we end up getting the blends here up in Canada. So I would suggest there are a few producers that make a Syrah, but if you happen to come across or you're traveling outside of Ontario, for some reason, I managed to pick up three when I was in Calgary this fall at a little wine store. So as you're traveling around, if you really love a good 
big red, uh, especially something in that uh, Shiraz Syrah um, flavor profile, then I would really suggest you take a look for the Chilean ones when you can find them. They're uh, they're not always easy to find, but when you they're usually fairly decently priced too. I would say maybe thirty dollars a bottle for a good one. So uh, keep a uh, look out for them and let me know when you find them someplace because I'm always looking myself. So I can't just keep going back to Calgary uh, to pick up wine. Of course I wouldn't mind to, but I wouldn't have to do it that way if I can find them here. Okay, the uh, next things, uh, some of the other ones that I noticed that were kind of unique. There was a lot of um, a lot of blends out, and they seem to be a lot of the almost French style. So the classic GSM, the Grenache um, Serra Mouved, that blend. Uh, I found a few of those. A couple of other unique blends. There was like Carmenere with Petit Verdot and Syrah. So they're bringing the Syrah in more of a blend. And even some of the bottles that said Syrah, when you actually look further or check on the product sheets that were there, they were still... Syrah with a little bit of uh, Cab Sauv in it. So it, it was a bit of a blend, but I guess anything over 90 some percent, you can basically call it a single varietal on the bottle. So it depends on their um, their rules for uh, bottling and labeling practices. So there's been um, most of the places or the wines booths that I stopped at last night. When I did ask them, is this available at the LCBO? A lot of them would say it's in vintages, coming to vintages, should be out next year, or no, these are only private imports. There was not a lot there last night, aside from the really well-known ones that were available uh, for anyone to purchase here in a local LCBO, vintages or otherwise. And even some of the ones that are, are available through vintages, they're currently out of stock. They won't be getting them until February, March next year. So a couple of them I did, for anyone who um, follows me along on Instagram, or my Facebook page, or even Twitter, I was actually uh, commenting on, uh, I think there was one or two that I really made note of that are coming up uh, for restock uh, early next year. So I'm making a note to go and grab them when they come in. And I also am going to list some uh, pictures, or so have some pictures from last night and from Montreal, as well as the all the photos and little video clips that I took uh, from last night so you can actually get to see the wine see what the atmosphere is like it's going to be a lot of fun I'll mention it again the show notes are going to be located at stephaniepichet.ca slash wine show 2017 so that's w-i-n-e-s-h-o-w 2017 or you can just go to flyingforflavor.ca and scroll down till you see the wine show 2017 link and that'll take you directly to the page as well So I'm going to list some picks. Uh, These are not necessarily wines that I had last night, but they are wines that are currently available or going to be available soon at the LCBO that I think are good buys. They were some of my favorites uh, or favorite brands that I know that are going to do well when they do come out early next year. So there's going to be, for those who really love a good big Chardonnay, there is a Chardonnay that's called Terra. It is uh, not cheap. It's about $53 for a good bottle of it. However, they're currently out of stock. I think that they told me that it's going to be early next year, February or March. That was one white that really stood out for me last night. Uh, there is a very famous brand called um, Erazuriz. So that's spelled E-R-R-A-Z-U-R-I-Z. They had uh, both their Syrah and their Carmenere were both spectacular. They're both very expensive if you want to get into the Reserva and Grand Reservas. That essentially you're just referring to how long they are in barrel before they go into bottles. So you get more of the oakiness and rounder, smoother flavors. But there's some of them are very highly rated. Um, they're usually $100 to $150 a bottle. But if you can uh, source them out, especially if you're in downtown Toronto. And for some reason, some of these wines that are already sold out in Toronto, you can find them in Ottawa. You'll notice I'll mention that a couple of times here in this list. Um, also in Ottawa, there's a little story for those of you um, who mourned like I did when Prince passed away. Um, I celebrated his life with a bottle of Purple Angel um, that's produced by Montez. It is a Carmenere from Chile, of course. It is their flagship one. It is their most popular wine that they produce. And they only produce a limited number of cases. Now, I can't remember what exactly what he told me last night. I don't remember if he said it was only 10,000 cases or something, but there's a very set limit. By the time they put them 
the ones for export into our LCBOs, SAQ, et cetera. And there's also certain allotments with particular restaurant chains. Uh, make note that I don't know if it's all Milestones restaurants, but I know that our Milestones in Sudbury does carry it. So it's only available by the bottle, not by the glass, however. But if you really like that really big, dark, smoky, stain your teeth kind of red, you'll really love Purple Angel. It's, uh, it's so again, it's popular for a reason. And both wine shows that I was attending um, this week sold out of it very quickly with all their samples. It was the first one to go. I was introducing it to some strangers that I met at the Montreal show, and they came back and stopped me an hour later in the show when they saw me just to thank me for pointing them towards the Purple Angel. So I was like, I was the angel to Purple Angel this week. So uh, if you can find the bottles for some reason, again, Ottawa seemed, the Ottawa stores seem to be still having quite a bit of stock. Toronto is pretty much sold out. And then you're looking at smaller towns in around Ontario. So if you're going near the Ottawa area, I don't know if maybe Ottawa just doesn't know the big Purple Angel trend, but try to find it if you can. It's, uh, it's something you're not going to regret. It's about $50 a bottle, uh, but it's worth every little drop. Now, um, another one. So San Pedro 1865 is another fairly famous brand. I really like their Cabernet Sauvignon. It's uh, silky smooth, uh, not overpowering. They do a really great job of it, so you can take a look for that one. I didn't mention this grape varietal yet. Uh, Pinot Noir is another one that we don't see a lot of here coming from Chile. But there's a uh, couple of them that I really wanted to make note of that really stood out, not necessarily last night that I've had before. Um, Connoisseur, that I mentioned it, sometimes they have a picture of a little bicycle on the front. You'd recognize the label if you saw it and spend a lot of time in the LCBO like I do. So take a look for their Pinot Noir if you really like a good big Pinot Noir. So this would not be the classic French style, Burgundian style, which is uh, more dry, more fresh, the Chilean style is going to be closer to your Northern California style in weight. So some people always ask me about a bigger uh, Pinot Noir. So this would be a little bit more comparable to that. And one of my favorites, I was there last night, and I believe it's in stock here at the LCBO. It's called Casas del Bosque. It is a Grand Reserve of Pinot Noir 2014. It's only $25 a bottle, but it's got some big fruit in it. And for uh, Norm, my hubby, when he's trying all these wines back to back, when he gets stopped in his tracks from a Pinot Noir, that's a very rare thing. So it's obviously very good. So you can try to look for that one. And then uh, Santa Carolina, again, is one of their most famous brands and from Chile, uh, their exporters anyways. And there is one that I didn't try last night, but I didn't see it last night. And I'm going to go and hunt it down. There is a grape from France called um, Carignan. Uh, that's spelled uh, C-A-R-I-G-N-A-N. It's usually used in blends. So around the Landoc region in France, uh, they use a lot for blends quite a bit. It is known for it is intense color. It's got thick skins, so you get a lot of color out of it, but it's not as heavy to drink as it appears. But it's got a beautiful, dry, smooth taste. There was one that I tried from another producer called Indomita, last night, but they don't carry, um, their Catania is only in uh, special, pri special or private order. But the Santa Carolina has one listed at the LCBO. It's called a Santa Carolina Specialties Dry Farming Catania 2013. So I'm on the hunt for that one. I was very impressed with it last night. It's very rare to see that great for idol bottled on its own like that. And I think it's uh, something to watch out for for the future. All right, so that's my little recap of the two wine shows. Again, I'm going to have the listing of all these different wines. Um, there are links directly to the LCBO. Um, if it's the SAQ, I'll have links to that as well. I will put up um, links to little videos. Um, if I can figure out how to upload them in my WordPress site, for some reason I keep getting um, problems with that unless it's a YouTube video. And I'll have uh, pictures and that kind of thing. But if I don't get those videos up, some of them were funny. I actually did a little ode to my very first Carmenere that I ever had that I fell in love with, and it was from the brand called Calatera. And uh, the team there were, had a lot of fun with me, uh, took my phone and videotaped me making this little, um, taping my story of how I fell in love with the Carmenere grape uh, when I was at the Intercontinental in Toronto almost 10 years ago. And uh, they were really uh, fun to hang around with. I think I spent more time at their booth than most of the other ones. Um, but their wines are always spectacular as well. So you can take a look at that. Uh, and just my overall silliness. That's what happens with wine. And I'm in my happy place with wine and food, as usual. 
So if you enjoyed this um, wine episode, bonus episode, and you haven't caught the last one, which I did uh, for Prince Edward County, these one, those ones are going to be, again, less formal, more of me talking just about the wines, and we're going to get back to regular format interviews and other topics uh, starting this coming Saturday. So this Saturday is going to be, um, it's called Safe and Not Sorry. It's all talking about all the things you need to watch out for, first aid, choke, first aid choking, food allergies in specific, having to do with dining out or when you're traveling, and what you need to be aware of, whether you have the allergies or you're serving somebody that has some kind of an allergy or other health need. So I uh, brought in a uh, friend of mine who owns a safety training company in Sudbury to chat with me a little bit about that. And she's probably going to pop up on more than one episode later on. I would actually like to do a full first aid travel insurance talk for uh, a future episode uh, early 2018. So I'll get Lori to come back and hopefully we're going to videotape that once you get the links for those. So again, I appreciate you listening to my babbling. I'm always happy to talk about wine with people who like to listen. If you have any uh, leads for me on wine events or things that I should be uh, looking at or visiting in the future, uh, feel free to send me an email at travelqueen at stephaniepichet.ca. So that's travelqueen at stephaniepichet.ca. Or just go ahead and send a message through the website at flyingforflavor.ca. Either one works. You can always reach me. Have yourself a great week. Uh, Make sure you let me know if you try any of these bottles and you like them. And I will be chatting with you again this Saturday. Take care.